How's it going everybody? Today I'm super super excited because I'm going to be reviewing the follow-up to one of my favourite lenses ever and certainly my favourite lens on the Canon EOS R which was the Canon RF 85mm f1.2 L lens, a beautiful beautiful portrait lens, it's super sharp um, as you'd expect of a 1.2 lens it gives wonderful out of focus elements and background blur and bokeh and all that sort of good stuff and being as I was such a huge fan of this lens I've been waiting um, with bated breath for the successor lens, or I should say the sister lens, or the companion lens, which is the Canon RF 85mm f1.2 LDS lens, which stands for Defocus Smoothing. The Defocus Smoothing technology doesn't affect the entire plane, it only affects the defocused areas, or the out of focused areas. In other words, the point of focus, so the eyes of your subject and your subject, will, will, remain, will remain tack sharp while the background, and indeed the foreground elements, will be rendered defocused. So a soft focus lens would make everything look kind of dreamy and like you rub Vaseline on the lens, including the subject, but the defocus smoothing lens will only apply that kind of uh, defocused effect, and it's a very different, very distinct effect from soft focus, um, but it will only apply that effect to the outer focus elements in the background and the foreground, but your subject, the point of focus, will remain completely unaffected. And how this is achieved, again, uh, a traditional soft focus lens will use um, spherical um, aberration and will introduce spherical aberration to your image to create this artificial um, blur and blooming. But in the uh, defocus smoothing optic, uh, this is achieved by a um, vaporized coating of this patented or signature DS coating. Canon won't tell us what it is or what it consists of exactly, but uh, it works by virtue of controlling or uh, affecting the amount of light that enters the lens and hits the camera sensor. This vapor deposited coating inside the lens has uh, a higher transmittance at the center and a lower transmittance at the periphery. So um, the, the net result, the effect that you will get is twofold. When you're uh, photographing uh, say, for example, photographing at night and you get the, the highlights, such as um, if, you, if you're shooting fairy lights behind you and those lights will be rendered as bokeh balls, lovely circular balls of light. Um, on a standard, um, or the standard 85mm RF lens, those bokeh balls will be rendered with a hard edge. The circles will have a hard edge to them. Whereas with the defocus smoothing lens, the bokeh balls will be rendered as much softer edges, feathered edges, almost as if someone had drawn a hard or painted a hard circle and then just feathered the edges away so they, they are soft and they have, they have incredibly uh, gentle fall off. But you also get lower light transmittance. So while both lenses are, um, by ratio, by mathematics and physics, while they're both f1.2 lenses, and while the DS defocus smoothing lens still possesses the uh, depth of field properties of an f1.2 lens in terms of transmittance, in terms of the amount of light that actually reaches through the lens elements and through this uh, DS coating and hits the sensor, it's in effect uh, has a T-stop of 2.2. So you're losing about a, a one and a third stops of light. So there, there's our first sort of semi-hurdle with this lens um, is that in order to show its party trick, you've got to turn the lights down. And if you turn the lights down, suddenly your 1.2 lens is actually a 2.2 lens. And that means you're going to have to, if you want to really freeze the motion, you want to keep your shutter speed nice and fast, you've either got to raise the ISO or, you know, you've got to balance the triangle. And that can make it a little bit trickier to shoot, even in what would seem to be a well, a well lit, dimly lit situation, for example, shooting in street. Uh, shooting at night, shooting in the streets, we've got some um, some nice portraits that illustrate the effects of this lens. Um, and I'll put some side by side, some, some similar comparison shots taken in the same place with the same lighting conditions um, at 1.2 on the standard 85mm lens and at effectively 2.2 on the DS lens. So you can see, first of all, the difference in that bokeh, the difference in the background blur. So again, those the bokeh balls or the, the discs of light will be have a much harder edge on the 85mm, the standard 85mm lens, and they will have a much softer, a much more uh, brush painterly, a brush-like painterly quality on the defocus smoothing lens. But you'll also notice in those side-by-side -side images, using maintaining the same settings, so literally taking one shot with this lens, taking it off, and putting on this lens, there is quite a pronounced exposure difference. Again, because you're, sh you're going from shooting at f1.2 to effectively 2.2. The interesting 
effect here, which I wasn't entirely prepared for, is that while the lovely soft out of focus um, bokeh is inarguably softer and creamier and by many definitions more pleasing, the bokeh is more pleasing on the DS lens, the fact of the matter is that I think in a lot of cases those hard discs of light and those um, you know, those, those big bold circles in the background, those big disco light looking things, I think in a lot of ways they actually have more character on the 85mm, the standard 85mm lens. And I tried to sort of think and try and articulate what that difference really amounts to. It feels like a little bit of the charisma of those images is missing. And I think the closest thing I can liken it to is having the defocus smoothing effect actually reduces the impact, it reduces the full frame feeling of your images and actually renders background blur more as you would expect on a smaller crop sensor system. The rendering to my eye was much more akin to the results I get when I shoot with Micro Four Thirds systems. Uh, I think again that's borne out in the sample shots I took during the day. What you really notice is that with the standard 85mm 1.2 lens, you get uh, more of that, more texture, more verisimilitude going on in the background of the images taken with the standard uh, 85mm lens because it is allowing some of those harsh lines and those hard edges and a bit more of that. It's not really noise because you certainly wouldn't accuse the bucket of this lens as being noisy, but there is more agitation in the rendering of the background blur in this lens than there is with this one, which is very creamy, very ethereal, very dreamy and soft and smooth and velvety and lovely and wonderful. But again, it seems devoid of some of that character. So it, it's, it's not as straightforward as I would have thought it would be. Um, I, was, I was ready and prepared to say, you know what, I don't need this standard 85mm 1.2 because I really love that creamy, dreamy bokka. I'm going to you know, ditch this in favour of this. Given the choice, I'm not sure I would actually make that decision. Um, if for no other reason than this lens is $300 and £450 more expensive than this lens. The reason for the price difference, because again, these two lenses technically and physically in every measurable respect, bar one, are identical. Same number of elements, same number of aperture blades, same weight, same size, same caps, same switches, same everything, except two elements in this lens have the vapor deposited defocus smoothing coating. That's the only difference, literally the only difference. You're paying for the privilege because this is such an exclusive little boutique lens, they're gonna produce them in such fewer numbers and it's gonna be a lens that probably in uh, a few years time will be revisited and people look back on this lens and like, wow, what an, what an underappreciated classic that was and it'll only grow in mythos because so few people own it. It'll be like the Nikon Noct. You know, it'll be that lens that because it was a bit quirky and a bit expensive and a bit weird, it was less adopted and therefore becomes more uh, more mythical, more godlike. But as I said, I was fully expecting to say, you know what, don't need that, want this. And if I were given the option today of buying the two, I think I would probably plump for the standard 85mm lens, purely because, as I say, having a true f1.2 aperture enables you to shoot in those low light conditions. And again, you're not getting the creamy background, but you're getting still phenomenal bokeh on this lens. Phenomenal um, out of focus rendition with the hard edges. If you like, and if you think, as it appears that I do, that those harder edges and a little bit of, not noise, but agitation, subtle agitation in that soft, green, uh, creamy background is more pleasing. This is the lens for you. If you are willing to accept a trade-off in terms of the transmittance, in other words, you're willing to shoot um, images that are a lot darker because this is effectively a T2.2 lens as opposed to an F1.2 lens. And also the net results, you may love them. You may think they're great. You may think like, wow, those images are fantastic. What's this guy talking about? There's, there's no question this, is, this lens blows that lens out of the water. In which case, it's an easy shout. So aside from the fact that each of these lenses will give you a very unique and a very pleasing in their own individual ways, out of focus uh, rendition and background blur and bokeh, somehow 
the 85mm DS lens is notably sharper than the standard 85mm lens. And I don't quite understand how that is because they're basically the same lens. I mean, all this lens is, is this lens taken to another bit of the production line, having two bits of coating sprayed on two elements, and then put in a slightly different box. I mean, it's the same lens. So I don't know whether it's the fact that this is slightly better calibrated in terms of it's a slightly newer lens than this one. Maybe it's the firmware that is slightly more accurate. Maybe it's even the fact that this magical DS coating is somehow converging light in new and magical ways. I don't know, but somehow this lens is sharper because the standard 85mm lens, which as I said is a beautiful portrait lens, it's razor sharp in the center, but that sharpness does dull somewhat towards the edges of the frame. But somehow the 85mm DS lens is razor sharp in the middle and that sharpness continues virtually edge to edge. Hey ho, sample variation, firmware variation, whatever it could be, that's, that's the way the cookie has crumbled in this case. So again, the 85mm uh, 1.2L defocus smoothing lens is, as I say, the closest Canon will probably ever get to doing a lens baby lens. It's a special effect lens through and through. For my money, when I first reviewed this lens a few months ago, the standard RF 85mm f1.2 was my favorite current generation lens and my favorite lens on the Canon RF mount system. And I was fully expecting it to be knocked off its perch by the defocus smoothing version. And at the end of the day, I don't think that's happened. Um, as I've been talking to you guys and thinking about it and trying to order my thoughts, I kind of think, you know what? While this is more unique in terms of technically what it's achieving, I think it's less distinct. I think it's less characterful. I think it's less charismatic. I think it's less, has less personality. I think I prefer the hard bokeballs. I prefer the hard edges. I prefer in the photographs of the pretty girl in front of the Christmas tree, the fact that it looks like she's in some sort of mad kaleidoscope of color. There's these flying pinwheel discs of rainbow colors all around her and it looks psychedelic and crazy. Yeah, it's more charismatic. It has more personality. And the more I'm thinking about it, the more I think, you know what? This is the lens that I want to keep mounted to the front of my EOS R, if I can mount the damn thing. That was probably a bit of a rambling vlog, but hopefully between my, blah, 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 my, my verbal diarrhea and some of the images I've, I've given to illustrate, hopefully you can get a feel for the difference between these two lenses. If not, any questions, please just drop some comments below and I'll do my best to answer them as best I can, hopefully in a more articulate and uh, truncated way than I have done in this video. So <laughs> thank you very, very much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I hope to see you again in a new video very, very soon.